I just think Machiavelli what has been very maligned by history. Mm. Uh, because, you know, to put it simply, Machiavelli was not Machiavellian. You know, I mean, he, you know, and, and, and his name has come to stand for, you know, cynicism and deviousness and ruthlessness and power politics in general, uh, because of his, this little book, The Prince, that he wrote. But you have to think about the writing of that book. This is a man who was a profound Democrat, you know, who served the city of Florence when it became a republic, when it chased the Medici family out. And when the Medicis came back and regained power, they hated him and they tortured him and almost killed him and then sent him into exile and he spent the rest of his life being unable to return to his own hometown and to live in the countryside in exile in the villa. Um, so he had every reason to loathe princes of the Medici kind. You know? and, and he lived in this period when not just the Medicis but the Borgias and the Sforzas and all these great families were behaving in the most ruthless way. And he wrote this little treatise about not what he would like things to be like, but how power actually worked, the, what he observed, you know, the ruthlessness of it. And it's a classic case of shooting the messenger. You know, here's a man who understood the nature of power and made the mistake of writing it down too clearly and unvarnished and not at all, no soft soaping at all. Does Machiavelli's The Prince democratize the nature of power? Please join us in our brief exploration of Niccolo Machiavelli's treatise The Prince, where we unmask the nature of power while also speculating on whether his true audience was in fact the people rather than the princes who ruled them. I'm your host, Zach. Now please, sit back and enjoy today's edition of Lit Tips. Recognized as the father of modern political philosophy, the name Machiavelli has been unfairly attributed to those who possess manipulative or evil characteristics like, say, Shakespeare's Iago and Othello. Hear me! If ever I did dream of such a matter, appall me! Thou told me that it's told him in thy head! Machiavellian has become a pejorative, a term used towards politicians we dislike or someone who achieves power by nefarious machinations. But to understand the prince, we must first identify its author, Niccolo Machiavelli. It was his experiences as a statesman, traveler, historian, and philosopher that motivated his work, after all. In reality, Machiavelli was something of a renaissance man, pun intended, as he lived during the transition between the Middle Ages and modernity. In addition to his political works, he's known as a writer of carnival songs, comedies, and poetry and also serving as a senior official in the Florentine Republic. During this time of the Renaissance, an unstable Italy was fractured into city-states fought over by families such as the Medici family and outside forces like France and Spain who each vied for power in the region. It was while carrying out diplomatic missions in the early 1500s when Machiavelli witnessed the realities of war and state building as Cesare Borgia and his father Pope Alexander VI used brutal methods to bring central Italy under their possession. Such occurrences would later serve as examples in the prince as a way to unite Italy from foreign influences. But the infighting would be too great to overcome. Nearly a decade later, in 1512, the Medici defeated the Florentines at Prato and took power with the help of the warrior Pope, Pope Julius II. The Florentine city-state and republic were dissolved and Machiavelli faced a year of banishment. The following year, in 1513, the Medici charged Machiavelli with conspiracy and imprisoned him, subjecting him to the torture method known as the strappato which binds the prisoner's hands behind their back with a rope as they hang from their bound wrists, forcing all their weight on their arms to dislocate their shoulders. Machiavelli was subsequently released after three weeks of denying his involvement. Living in banishment at his farm estate, he wrote his plays and other works while still clinging to his passion for politics. But did Machiavelli have something else in mind? In his preface, Machiavelli dedicates his work to Lorenzo de' Medici, the Duke of Urbino, 
who was the recipient of his work. The Prince was written in 1513, the year after the Medici took power and just months after Machiavelli was tortured by the family. The book was originally intended for Lorenzo's uncle, Giuliano de Lorenzo de Medici, but since he died in 1516, it went to the younger Lorenzo. Machiavelli wrote The Prince in the same vein as traditional mirrors for princes, an educational literary genre that serves as a speculative instructional guide for the rulers in the subject of governance and behavior. But where preceding mirrors for princes focus on imagined republics and principalities, Machiavelli's work is especially innovative in how explicit it considers the realities of power and governance. Again, this was most likely a result of both his personal experiences and the nature of a fractured Italy. Some even reason the prince as the first work of modern political philosophy, where the abstract ideals previously covered are overshadowed by an effectual truth. In The American Scholar, Garrett Mattingly writes, in some ways Machiavelli's little treatise was just like all the other mirrors of princes, in other ways it was a diabolical burlesque of all of them, like a political black mass. In reality, it's such political and ethical truths that fly in the face of the dominant Catholic and scholastic doctrines of the time, directly challenging them. An example that's typically referred to is how Machiavelli writes how it's better to be hated than loved. His critics may use such examples as a way to tarnish his character, but others would point out that he's merely saying the quiet part out loud. Since regardless of his work, such methods of control obviously predate his writings. Later during the Age of Enlightenment, Diderot speculated that Machiavelli's true intent was to expose princely rule but from behind the subtlety of a stately veneer. French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rizal goes a step further writing, Machiavelli was a proper man and a good citizen, but being attached to the court of the Medici, he could not help veiling his love of liberty in the midst of his country's oppression. The choice of his detestable hero, Cesare Borgia, clearly enough shows his hidden name, and the contradiction between the teaching of the prince and that of the discourses on Livy and the history of Florence shows that this profound political thinker has so far been studied only by superficial or corrupt readers. The court of Rome sternly prohibited his book. I can well believe it, for it is that court it most clearly portrays. In her essay, Trapping the Prince, Mary Dietz continues to shape Diderot and Rousseau's characterizations, arguing against the satirical interpretation, saying Machiavelli was offering carefully crafted advice, such as arming the people, designed to undo the ruler if taken seriously and followed. Let's take a moment to examine Machiavelli's opponents. As we noted above, powerful families such as the Medici and Borgia used their influence in the Vatican in order to advance their power when their family members won the papacy. It's difficult to manipulate your followers when they can read your handbook themselves. One cannot ignore how the prince was eventually placed on the infamous Index Librorum Prohibitorum by Pope Paul IV in 1559 deeming it a heretical work, it would be in good company. With the advent of the printing press, one could share vast amounts of knowledge with ordinary people. Like the internet today, the printing press was a game changer. Martin Luther, who lived around this time period, first translated the Bible into the German vernacular from that of Latin to make it accessible to the masses so they could interpret it for themselves, rather than rely on the church who could continue to deceive them. Similarly, Machiavelli's The Prince was written in the Italian vernacular instead of Latin, just as Dante had made popular with his Divine Comedy. According to philosopher Antonio Gramsci, The Prince wasn't for the ruling class, but for the common people, for as the same reason as the translated Bible was used as a reference in order to establish a new hegemony. Now it should be noted that the prince didn't hit the printing press until 1532, five years after Machiavelli's death, and even though this was carried out under the permission of the Medici Pope Clement VII, 
One may assume that they misjudged its future acclaim since Machiavelli's political works weren't that popular in his lifetime. Also note that there's no evidence that the Medici read the treaties, so one can speculate that they simply read the preface and deemed it as simply harmless. What's to account for its release otherwise? Again, this is just pure speculation of an armchair historian. Make of it what you will. Let us know in the comments if you have any thoughts on this. Machiavelli clearly states how it's better to govern with virtue and prudence as opposed to chance and fortune, which Marcus Fisher argues stands out against others of the time and is in contrast of traditional Christian discourse. Although, Machiavelli is much closer to pre-Christian Greek and Roman concepts. On top of this, Machiavelli encourages risk-taking, an ambition that also breaks with traditional Christian values. This was because Machiavelli knew that Italy needed many reforms in his lifetime in order to set it on the right course. However, just like in today's world, ideas the establishment feared were diminished and their meanings intentionally distorted. Machiavelli and his treaties were blamed for everything under the sun, from the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre to the underlying evil nature of either the Catholics or Protestants, depending on which side you were on. Callously demonizing Machiavelli rather than intelligently reading him became a way to go after political opponents, all the while simultaneously heeding his advice. So seems to be the manipulative nature of the modern political landscape. Despite his reputation, I think the greatest contribution Machiavelli has made to political thought is sort of the pra is, is to look at things practically. For the Greeks, reason, uh, both Aristotle and Plato thought that reason uh, ruled the way the world worked and the way human societies work. Uh, politics is the knowledge by which we make men good. That is not Machiavelli's uh, uh, philosophy. Machiavelli believed and he says this, he says that you know, many have believed, have written about societies that never were and never could be. I want to show you the, the way men really are. Men are selfish, they're ambitious, they're deceitful. How can we build a government based on this premise? Machiavelli's The Prince had a profound impact on leaders in the West, like Henry VIII and Charles V. And as the modern materialist philosophy developed from the 16th and through to the 18th centuries, more respected and important figures embraced his work from Francis Bacon and John Milton to Spinoza and Edward Gibbon. The Prince even found admirers in America's founding fathers like Benjamin Franklin, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and John Adams. It would seem that Niccolo Machiavelli will have the last laugh in outlasting his critics. And in the end, Many, like the Catholic Counter-Reformation, who criticized Machiavelli, accepted the reality for the necessity of cunning and deceit, but parting ways upon economic progress over war. But we should understand that Machiavelli was working under the context of Italy during his time period. So now when you hear someone either abuse or misuse the term Machiavellian, please send them this video. Or simply explain it to them in the most condescending way possible. Either way, they deserve it. We hope that you enjoyed this edition of Lit Tips. As always, hit that like button if you like what we're doing, subscribe for more videos on literature from your favorites to the plain obscure, hit that bell if you want to be notified when videos drop, and leave a comment with your thoughts on this video, along with suggestions for any books or authors you would like us to cover in future episodes. Until next time, keep reading.